In this tutorial, I'm going to go through a little bit more detail about the search view. This is where I review the video content that was recorded on my camera. In this case, you'll see I have a camera set up in my front door, and I've been recording video since about 8 o'clock this morning, and it's still recording, so there's activity happening here in this time bar. And you can select the camera you're viewing by this drop-down list here, and you can filter what specific types of video clips to show in this list here. The default is to show all objects, but I can say, for example, show only the people, and you'll see that the number of results that are shown has been reduced uh, from the total of 46. And I can also show rules here. I can filter, for example, I had a rule set up to show people coming up to my door. So it turns out there's no one who came to my door today. So if there's nothing to look at in my rules, I might go through and just check through what happened throughout the course of the day. So I start at the top. I can go here and I can click the play button and see the video. There are some controls here that I can use to skip back two seconds or forward two seconds or frame forward or frame backwards. If I hold it down, it'll repeat and go as fast as it can. You notice there's a little blue mark there, and that represents where the object was detected in the timeline. So if there's a long clip and I want to skip to where that object is detected, I can click here. Or there's actually a sh keyboard shortcut where if I hit the Enter key, then it'll pop back to that beginning point. There are other keyboard shortcuts that are displayed in the Controls menu. For example, you can jump to Previous or Next Event, which refers to those blue marks in case you have more than one object of motion in a given clip. So, the way I would use this is I would hit the space bar. I usually use the keyboard, and then I would just hit the down arrow key. Uh, there's a car, down arrow key, there's a dog or cat, I guess and another car and I would just go through the course of the day and see what's going on here. Now earlier I mentioned that I had set up a rule to look for people coming up to my front door and it was nothing today but uh, there might have been something yesterday so if I want to go there I can click on this arrow key or I can jump to a day by clicking here now in this case I had a rule set up saying that rather than clicking through these results it's a full day yesterday I want to see if someone came up to my door I was actually waiting for a package so if I go up here I can scroll down to the rule that I created people coming to my front door and I'm going to click down here and I'm going to skip forward a bit to protect the privacy of my mailman and when you click on the play button you can see that he is delivering a package for me. And you can also set up a rule so that when an event like this is seen an email is sent to you. There's a separate tutorial on how to set up this rule in the rule editor. Next I'm going to show you a feature that's available in the basic and pro version but not the free starter version. If you right click on the screen you'll notice there is a large and small setting and this means I can display my videos at a larger size. And for best results, you're going to want to also save the videos at a higher resolution so that they'll look better in the larger screen size. In order to do that, I go to the monitor view. I right click on a camera. I select edit camera. And in the settings screen, you'll see that there is an option to scale video to a resolution. The default is QVGA or 320 by 240, but you can set this to VGA at 640 by 480. It's important to note that this only changes the resolution the video is saved at. It does not necessarily change the video that your camera is streaming. So in order to make sure that the camera is sending the same video resolution that is being recorded, you can click on the back button and here you'll see that the device address has a website link that you can click to get to the configuration website of your camera. 
and in this website you'll typically find some sort of setup or image page where you can set the resolution of your camera. So thank you for listening to this tutorial on the search view of vitamin D video. There's more information in the online reference guide which can be accessed under the help menu.